work at Brex. Um, and so Brex is basically trying to uh, make finances be, um, you know, self-driven, just like Tesla is trying to do cars be self-driven. Um, and, you know, as part of, um, of my role at Brex and the role of my life, professionally speaking, is to create a life of products through great and tight user experience. To me, you know, user experience goes much beyond only looking at the user experience and the surface that the users will touch. Um, talking to customer support and, and all of that is part of the experience, right? Um, for us, for instance, there are many internal processes that users don't really see, but they're very, a very big part of their experience. And so those processes being well-defined, well-created, and being uh, able to be fast for our uh, operations team, for instance, is a big part of it. And that's where Retool comes up to help us. Um, so a little bit more about me. Um, you know, I have a variety of different backgrounds in my career so far. So I started on graphical design, but I also worked on embedded systems, which is a, a place with lots of constraints. Uh, I worked on traffic systems. And then for the past five years, I've been working on payments. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, I started coding by myself. Um, I don't really have, you know, the university and all of that. Um, and so I've always been curious. And to me, you know, I really love being, uh, have, being able to use Retool because Retool is a tool for my curiosity as well. Sometimes I just want to see if building this quick page will help people. And many times that's true. And I am happy that nowadays I can really don't spend a lot of time building UIs and, and explore with, with some concepts very quickly um, to, to perform my job better. So I really love doing that uh, and Retool enables me doing that as well. So today I want to do a demo on a very, very important thing for Brex and that is communications. I talked about this on the, pre on the previous Retool webinar and you guys can take a look at there as well. And so today I want to show again that tool and some of the iterations that we did on top of it as well. So basically, what is the problem here? Um, you know, managing copy of, of email, push notifications, and SMS is oftentimes a burden. Nobody, as an engineer, wants to take a ticket to, to you know, update a copy of something. That is something that should be self-serve. And at Brex, we really believe that we should empower cross-functional teams to do their job better. And every time that we needed to talk about a notification at Brex, we would link a GitHub thing with not everybody has access to and people wouldn't have access to edit. And the visibility of emails and SMS and et cetera was a big, big problem at Rex. We wanted to enable marketing, product, design, engineering, and basically everybody at the company to have access to how things look like at Rex. And so to fix that, we created this tool called Template Manager. Um, Template Manager is a tool that allows you to edit, preview, and see everything that happens on notifications at Rex. And the basic architecture of this system is that we have this service called Template Manager, and it's accessed by two different APIs. We have our admin API, which talks to Retool, or actually Retool talks to admin API. We have the product API that talks to Template Manager as well, and product API is accessed by dashboard and mobile. On the admin API, we can use um, Retool groups to manage who can add it, who can edit, and who can view and who can approve notifications. And Retool uses this API to access the Template Manager feature. So all the security is created through this admin API. Uh, and the security level and APIs that get access from table manager is different between admin and product. Then the front ends are also different for both. So I want to do a quick demo on that. Um, and I wanted to start with the, how the tool looks like. So this is Template Manager. And right now we're seeing an SMS notification. On Template Manager, copywriters have direct access to edited copy of notifications. And they can see on this code block here. This one is a pretty big um, message that we have. We are working to break this in more specific templates as well. But for now, there's lots of conditionals. But it's good that you can edit things here and you can see the preview of them. So as you change the copy here, you can see the preview of them. You can do that for SMS notifications. You can do that for push notifications and you can do that for email notifications as well. And so for an email notification, for instance, uh, you can see something like the email, how it looks like. So I selected the admin request card here. 
I can see the description, the owner of this, uh, the subject, and the, the plain text body. And I can also see how that email looks like here on the right-hand side. Um, if I want to test this email on a client, I can copy the HTML of this email, and now I can paste that on somewhere else. And so this is a good way of doing it. And I can also see the plain text version of that email. That's a very, very interesting way of doing all of that. And as part of this, recently, we have introduced a new feature, which took us very, very few amount of time to work. And that is sample data. So this is the payload that a notification will get. Coming back to the architecture, every time that a product wants to send a notification to the template manager, they will talk directly to it through gRPC. Uh, product API just consumes those to show the notification center uh, and to right, render a notifi uh, the notification to send that to the user. Basically, services will pass this information to the notification, and then the notification will do some switch here to kind of uh, render the, the message here on the right. Um, we created this feature where you can have multiple sample data on it. And so if you want to see a different type of notification with different payloads, you can also see those payloads on here. And you can create new payloads very easily. So let's say this is not a provisionally approved account. And so I can say false here and I can I, I can call it fully approved and I can save a new data set based on this. And so now the message is slightly different for this type of account as well. We have uh, enabled some other features like seeing analytics. So if you want to see how many renders this type of template had, we will be able to show a chart to you. So we sent 13 of these notifications on October 8th, which is great. Uh, it's nice to know. Uh, and when you deprecate a transaction uh, a notification, you can also see how many times it was rendered on the past 15 days. And because it's December already, it has been rendered zero times on the past 15 days. Uh, and you can deprecate this message. All of this is built using Retool. And the again, touching on quickly on the architecture of this, um, Retool has this amazing feature, which is supporting um, GraphQL. And so we create our mutations in GraphQL fully here and Retool enabled us to actually have completions. So you really have completions of all the mutations and all the queries, and it's all type safe as well, which is great. Um, and so everything here is built using basically um, GraphQL mutations and GraphQL queries. We do create a database sometimes, uh, and we do have some uh, triggers on JavaScript as well. And that's the basic architecture of how this system works. This is kind of the demo that I wanted to give you all. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have around how we build it, why we build it, what are the challenges that we have, and anything else that you're very curious about. Thanks.